Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this video is uh, the second uh, part of two parts uh, discussing the state of the Arctic sea ice. And of course, the state of the Arctic sea ice, which is quite dismal, is crucial for weather patterns on our planet. It's crucial for affecting its effects on the the jet stream. Its, its effects on the temperature of the Arctic overall and therefore the effects on the jet stream because the jet stream requires a cold Arctic warm equator. Because of the Ar great warming of the Arctic then the jet stream now is not the jet stream of a few years ago. It's slower, it's much wavier and we're getting huge you know swings in weather extreme weather events and uh, you know negative effects on on uh, us and all living plants and animals on this planet so let me get back to the where I was left off in the last video and this is an image of the Arctic sea ice extent from the National Snow and Ice Data Center so the previous um, so 2012 is here because that reached a record low in September. This is where we are tracking in 2019, significantly lower. And we crossed and we're kind of tracking along now to the previous minimum. So my guess is that we'll probably set a new minimum for sure this year, but you know, that's subject to I mean, we're, we're almost into July. We still got July and August and at least half of September uh, melting. Last year's minimum was September 21st. So, the, so uh, we'll see this year uh, what happens. This is the situation in the Arctic, the sea ice extent, June 27th. So we're seeing large open areas of water forming here. This is all gone. This ice is all gone compared to 2012. We're seeing big cuts here. And you know the cuts into here and here are deeper. And there's also lots of ice loss in this region. So this is not a good year for uh, sea ice. This is the Antarctic sea ice extent, 2019, much lower than normal. 2018 was lower than normal, but this year is setting all records. This is the configuration of the sea ice, medium ice edge, 1981 to 2010, and gaps. This is, uh, well, let's see, what was, yeah, okay, this is sea ice concentration showing you the areas. So there's not a lot of areas that are 100% concentration. Lots of it, you know, have big gaps. Okay, so, so that's uh, worsening. This is the extent. Okay, there just has to be 15% of ice within a certain region to be marked, in, to be included here in the extent, the white area. And this is the extent I've shown you this already. Okay, and this is sea ice concentration. So it clearly shows you all of the uh, gaps in the ice. So this is all, you know, this area here, you can see the next areas to melt out will be these type of areas here, you know, these areas here, these areas up here, right? So there's not a lot, you know, there's a pole here. So there's not a lot of 100% um, concentration ice. Okay, now this will be updated soon. Uh, this, was, this was a June 4th um, blog by the National Snow and Ice Data Center talking about the temperatures in the Arctic setting the stage for significant melt. Um, and uh, there will be another one coming up uh, soon, which I will then uh, talk about. But this is, this is May... Um, 1979 to 2019, how the extent is dropping. So it doesn't matter what month you get, 
you get a you get a uh, you know trend, and the and the sharpest trend is in is in September. Okay, this is the global forecast system two meter temperature. So temperatures just above the surface for Friday, June twenty eighth. So hot off the presses. Now the key thing in the temperature, um, and this is in uh, Celsius is that anything above zero, okay, anything, zero is freezing temperature for fresh water. Anything above zero is the green colors. And what you can see is across almost the entire Arctic, the temperature is above zero, above the ice. So, you know, it's maybe just a few degrees above to five degrees. Any, you know, this is more like, you know, five degrees up to 10 degrees and then you start getting the yellows uh, you know 15 degrees and you can see how warm it is along the coast of the Arctic Ocean it was warmer here you can also see um, where the heat wave is in um, Europe um, you can see you know where the ice is uh you know basically the effects here of the ice melting out so there's lots of melt ponds on top of the ice because the air temperature just above the ice is above zero okay so we're getting lots of melt ponds and that can have an impact on being able to accurately detect uh things from the satellite for example, you know, on those parameters I was talking about, most notably on uh, thickness, for example. Okay, so I showed you this curve at the beginning. Okay, so this is from the Polar Science Center. So I showed you the, the volume, the trend of the volume from the this beginning of the satellite era, 79, for, for sensors to monitor the Arctic region and the trends and the fluctuations are, you know, and I also mentioned that there seems to be an increase in, you know, significant deviations here. So the, that would indicate perhaps a critical slowing down of a system about to undergo a phase transition, i.e. ice to no ice. Um, so from this center, there's also, um, this is the PO mass uh, data. Um, so here we are in 2019. So we were actually lower in 2017, it appears. Um, and this is uh, 2012, I believe, when it set the minimum record here in September. This is 2016 is down there and other colors are down there too. Uh, 2017, I believe, is the purple. You have to magnify this to ha have a look. But all of the data is there. I highly recommend that you that you have a look at it. Um, there's lots of other stuff here, um, but I'll, I'll move on right now. So this is um, showing... This is the total precipitable water on the planet and and uh, there's some interesting things that you can so you can see the areas basically precipital water if you take the column of air above the surface and go all the way up to the top of the atmosphere you know you get it's colder and colder there's less and less water vapor right rising now if you took that whole if you took all the water vapor in that whole column going up to the top of the atmosphere from the surface and you condensed that water vapor and had it fall as precipitation, this is the depth of that precipitation. Okay, so what you see is, you know, of course, the very, the, the equatorial areas are the highest in concentration, up to, you know, 70 millimeters or three inches of precipitation if all of it dropped out. And you can see, you know, the, the bluer areas are about 20 to 30 and when you get down here, you get the very dry areas here at the poles, right? The poles are essentially, uh, you know, desert in terms of their uh, precipitation. Because they're cold, the air is able to hold 
much, much less water vapor than it is in warmer air at the equator. But you can see, you know, these sort of atmospheric, you know, fingers of high um, water concentrations, and they often come ashore, and we call them atmospheric rivers. Now, you can look at specific areas here. So we can look at the North Atlantic, for example. Okay, and we can change the time span. We can look at the last 120 hours, for example, right? And you can see these fingers of high, high total precipitable water as they move across and, and change. And you can see them at the, closer to the equator, moving from east to west with the trade winds and things. So very, very interesting data to, to look at. Now, this is uh, really fascinating stuff. Now, you can actually access this site. There is a link over here. If we go ba back to Arctic sea, sea ice graphs, you can go down here, and there is a link here, here right here. Okay, if you click on that, um, there's some warnings about the suitability of the site, but it's fine. And there's a lot of interesting parameters here. So first of all, we'll look at the 30-day um, GIF of the ice concentration. So 100% dropping down. So this is the last, um, this is projecting about a week into the future. So it's the last three weeks to about a week into the future. And it shows how the sea ice concentration is, is uh, declining as the ice is melting out. Um, then you can get the ice thickness here. So you can see how quickly this ice is, this ice is the uh, two meters, you know, one and a half to two, two and a half meters, and it's all melting back quickly, being replaced by one meter ice, you know, less than a meter ice in the fringes. So again, it's all melted out here, which didn't happen in 2012 for this time. There's also these areas here. I mean, basically the ice is being attacked from all sides warm water coming in from the Pacific, warm water coming in from the Atlantic, warmer, saltier water underneath the ice, attacking the ice from below, surface temperatures above zero, attacking the ice from above. So it's being attacked on all fronts, plus the export through the Fram Strait is very high. The ice is so fractured, there's not ridging, protecting there was some ridging here, but it's gone. So now these, this ice can just go through this sieve of the Canadian archipelago and represents a fairly recent and significant loss of ice mechanism. Before it was buttressed here by thicker ice and wouldn't weave through the Canadian archipelago and export through Nares Strait. There used to be ice bridges formed years ago, but again, the ice is, you know, that was ridged up fairly thick um, is no longer there. So we're talking about, you know, a, a multi-year ice-free Arctic uh, Ocean, essentially. Um, this is the speed and drift. So what you can see is, you can see the, um, this is in centimeters uh, per second and, you know, high to low. So you can see there are cyclones appearing up here There's where there's the swirls and there's times when there's tremendous export out through the Fram Strait. There's export out through the Nares Strait and there's lots of export out. Look at the speed here. Okay, so you see red in the islands, in the Canadian Archipelago Islands. And that that's, wasn't there a few years ago. The, there's no ridged ice here. There's no buttressing. Corks out of the bottle. The ice can be lost out that way as well. A uh, couple other interesting things. This is the sea surface salinity. Okay. Um, now notice a couple things. The Pacific, it's 32, 33 or so. That's parts per thousand. This would be 3.3% or 33 parts per thousand or 33 PSUs, practical salinity units. You can see it's in that region here. The Atlantic is much saltier. Um, and you can see, not sure what it's showing on top of the ice. You can do sea surface temperature and see how it is on the size of the ice. And you can also do the sea surface height. So warmer Pacific, the water's higher. Cooler Atlantic, water's lower. Okay, thanks for listening.